In this video, let's take a look at the updating lifecycle methods. That is, methods that are called when a component is being re-rendered because of changes to either props or state. Again, we will be going through them in the order that they are invoked. We have a total of five methods, but out of the five, three fall into the category of rarely used methods. We will, however, go through all five of them. The first method is a method we are now familiar with, get derived state from props. This is a static method which receives props and state as its parameter and has to return either null or an object that represents the updated state of the component. This method is called every time a component is re-rendered. And as we already discussed, this method is used when the state depends on the props of the component. You should not cause any side effects in get derived state from props. This method is one of the more rarely used methods in the updating phase. The second method in the updating phase is the should component update method. This method receives the updated props and state and the purpose of this method is clear from its name. It dictates if at all the component should re-render or not. By default, all class components will re-render whenever the props they receive or their state changes. This method can prevent that default behavior by returning false. What you can do in this method is compare the existing props and state values with the next props and state values and return true or false to let React know whether the component should update or not. So this method is basically for performance optimization. What you should avoid is causing any side effects or calling the setState method. This lifecycle method again is classified as a rarely used lifecycle method in the official React documentation. The third method is the all too familiar render method. We read this dot props and this dot state and return the JSX which describes the UI. Avoid changing the state or interacting with the DOM in the render method. The fourth method is called get snapshot before update. This method accepts previous props and previous state as its parameters and is called right before the changes from the virtual DOM are to be reflected in the DOM. This again is a method React documentation classifies as a rarely used method. You would use this method to capture some information from the DOM. For example, you can read the user's scroll position and after the update, maintain that scroll position by performing some calculations. This method will either return null or return a value. The returned value will be passed as the third parameter to the next method we will be talking about. So get snapshot before update used to read the current DOM state and returns a value or null. The final method in the update lifecycle is component did update. This method will be called after the render is finished in the re-render cycles. This means that you can be sure that the component and all its subcomponents have properly rendered itself after the update. This method accepts three parameters, previous props, previous state, and the snapshot value returned from get snapshot before update method. This method is guaranteed to be called only once in each re-render cycle. So what you can do is cause side effects. That is, you can make Ajax calls. But before making the call, you need to compare the previous props with the new props and then decide whether to make the Ajax call or not. If you're not comparing, you're making unwanted requests, which is not really a good idea. So component did update called once after the component has re-rendered and is suitable to make Ajax calls based on the previous and current props value. Alright, now that we have gone through all the five methods and what can or cannot be done in each of the methods, let's head over to the code and see their order of execution. 
For this demo, I will be reusing the components we created in the last video. Let's begin by adding the update lifecycle methods in the lifecycle A component. The first method is the get derived state from props method, which as you can see is already defined. The second method is should component update. Let's add that right before render. Should component update method, let's log it to the console and make sure to return true. The third method is the render method, which again, you can see has already been defined. The fourth method is get snapshot before update. So let's add that. Console.log lifecycle A get a snapshot before update. Finally, we have the component did update method. Console.log lifecycle A component did update. Now, the same three methods I will also include in the child component, which is lifecycle B. So copy the three methods, paste it in lifecycle B. Change the text lifecycle A to lifecycle B. Now, to trigger an update lifecycle, we need to change either the props or the state. Back in lifecycle A component, let's change the state on a button click. So in the JSX, add a button tag. The text is going to be change state. And on click, the handler is going to be this dot change state. Now let's define the method as a class property. This dot set state, name to code evolution. Now we can test our order of execution. And let me make a small correction and get snapshot before update, I'm going to return null over here and also in lifecycle B. All right, let's test this now. When I go back to the browser, you can see that all the methods pertaining to the mounting phase are already executed. Now I'm going to clear the console and click on the change state button. You can see that the update lifecycle methods are now logged. We have lifecycle A get derived state from props, should component update, and the render method. After that, the execution passes on to the child component. We have lifecycle B get derived state from props, should component update, and the render method. Once both the child and the parent components have been rendered, we have a slightly different order for get snapshot before update and component did update. First, the child component method is executed and then the corresponding parent component method is executed. But let me point out again that render and component did update are the more commonly used methods during the update lifecycle. The remaining three methods exist for special cases and should be used sparingly. If at all you do decide to define them, make sure you know what you're doing. All right, that is about the lifecycle methods in the updating phase of a component. Before we wind up, I want to quickly discuss the remaining two phases. Unmounting phase and the error handling phase. The unmounting phase has just one method, component will unmount. This method is invoked immediately before a component is unmounted and destroyed. In this method, you can perform some cleanup tasks like canceling any network requests, removing event handlers, canceling any subscriptions, and also invalidating timers from set timeout or set interval. What you shouldn't do is call the set state method. That is simply because the component is never re-rendered after it has been unmounted. So component will unmount, perform necessary cleanup, and don't call set state. The final phase we need to discuss about is the error handling phase. This phase has two methods. 
static get derived state from error and component did catch. These two methods are called when there is an error either during rendering in a lifecycle method or in the constructor of any child component. We will discuss in detail about both these methods when we talk about a concept called error boundaries in React. But for now, that is pretty much what I have on component lifecycle methods for a class component in React. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.